The MacPro Help Desk team welcomes your suggestions for our training and reference materials. Please contact us with your feedback and comments on this training or if you need other MacPro assistance. You may contact us via email at macpro underscore helpdesk at cms.hhs.gov or by phone at 301-547-4688. We just reviewed the steps required to obtain access to MacPro, one of which was to request your appropriate role or roles within the system. Now, we'll review the different state Medicaid state plan user roles within MacPro to familiarize you with the various options. In this section, we'll cover which Medicaid state plan MacPro roles are available to state users, and what each role can do. So this slide lists the MacPro Medicaid State Plan state user roles. MacPro roles determine users' range of available actions, responsibilities, and which reports can be accessed. A state user may have more than one Medicaid State Plan role in MacPro. So for example, they could be a state editor and state director, or any other combination. To complete the workflow, it's important that all state roles have at least one assignee with the correct authorities. However, states are encouraged to have more than one assignee in each role to prevent disruptions to the workflow during a user's absence. As we walk through each role in more detail, some of the terms may feel unfamiliar but you'll become more acquainted with them as we go through today's training. So let's take a second for our CMS representatives to add to this topic. Thank you, Annie. Sorry, having a mute button problem. So there are two things actually that we wanna reiterate uh, regarding state roles, because we have received some feedback in this area and even some questions. So to clarify something that Annie just said, we, we realize there are four state roles, so four roles that we have defined for the states to use, but we built these roles to have maximum flexibility. So flexibility in how you all can assign roles, um, there's no limitation to, um, to how many people can hold the role and how many roles a person can hold. So for instance, if you have a staff that is you know, on the smaller side, one person holding each role may be of great benefit to you all. And part of this flexibility that's built into the system is, you know, and the ability to assign maybe just one person to perform multiple roles in the system, you know, we've designed it so that it's also a seamless experience for that person as they work, you know, through the workflows. So that said, you know, this, this built-in flexibility and the ability to kind of manage your roles as is appropriate for the, the staff arrangement you have in your state. One thing that we have learned both as CMS users and just in working with the states is that it really is uh, important to have backups for each for each role in the authority as well. So as we add new authorities, um, you know, considering that if you have maybe one person who works um, your health home spas for your state, you know, that person has the state point of contact authority or the SPOC as we like to call them, but in their absence, you know, may need to move something through a workflow or submit something to CMS since that is what that role does. So understanding that if that person is out, we, you would need to have a backup for that role so that you're not prevented from submitting something to us. And, you know, the reason we bring this up is because we understand that particularly for spas, that actions are very time sensitive and we wouldn't want you all to not be able to submit something to us, um, you know, in, in an effort to get a specific effective date because you didn't have, you know, a person with, with that role. And, and just so you all know, we've learned this as well at CMS, we are, you know, also committed to making sure we have proper backups for all of our roles and for each of the authorities so that we're not inhibited as well from being responsive to state action. So I know that the next couple of slides, we'll talk a little bit more about the roles what the roles do, but I just wanted to highlight those two points as we go through the next part of the presentation. And I'll hand it back to you now, Annie. Great, thanks, Jessica. So now let's go over the four state user roles in detail. 
The state editor, also known as the SE, is responsible for creating and updating content for new submission packages, converting draft submission packages to official submission packages, and collaborating with the state point of contact on submission package clarification and RAI responses. The state point of contact, also known as SPOC, is the next role in the process. The SPOC is responsible for submitting submission packages to CMS. Users holding this role also serve as the primary contact with CMS for submissions, including clarification requests and RAI. When working with a submission package, the SPOC documents the, and reviews correspondence log entries, returns submission packages to state editors when revisions or additional information is needed, reviews and updates submission package content, and submits RAI responses to CMS. This role is also specific to each Medicaid state plan reporting authority. For example, if you would like to be an SPOC for health home spas, along with eligibility spas, SPOCs will need to request the role twice, one for each respective authority. The state director acts as the third role in the state submission process. Users holding this role review and certify state-prepared submission packages for the state point of contact submission to CMS. As a note, the MacPro state director is not necessarily the state's Medicaid director. The state system administrator, or SSA, is an administrative role that reviews and dispositions in other words, approves or disapproves, their state user role requests. SSAs also have the ability to reassign specific tasks on behalf of other users within their state. Prior to a state creating a submission package in MacPro for the first time, the SSA must create a state profile. In addition to the actions listed, the SSA can view the state system reports. So does anyone have any questions about the material we've covered so far? So now let's look, take a look at how these roles operate in the submission process. The following workflows will help you visualize the life of a SPA submission package. In this section, you will gain an understanding of the steps for creating and submitting submission packages and how each role is involved. So before we dive into the workflows, let's define a few terms that you'll hear frequently. There are key functionalities in MacPro that are available to state users. The next few slides provide brief introductions into these features but as we go through the presentation, we'll look at them in depth. For Medicaid State Plan in Mac, in Mac Pro, anything that is submitted to CMS begins as a submission package. Briefly, a submission package is a compilation of state plan templates that make up a submission that CMS will review. In this case, a state plan amendment. We'll describe this more in a few minutes. Previous state plan templates are now referred to as reviewable units in MacPro and abbreviated as RUs. Reviewable units are the forms in which state users enter information for their submission package. We'll also talk about these in more detail in later slides. Next on this list is dependencies. We won't go into too much detail in today's training, um, but they are important to keep in mind. Dependencies refer to the RUs that are dependent upon other RUs, which means that with a change in one RU, that will result in a change to another uh, dependent RU. These are described as primary and secondary RUs. Also, it is important to note that whenever a change in a primary RU affects a secondary RU, 
The secondary RU will need to be revised to reflect that primary RU. The last item on this slide is an important method of centralized communication called correspondence logs. Correspondence logs are an official record of communication between the states and CMS. CMS can provide information to the state and the state can respond. Only the state point of contact and the CMS point of contact can write in a correspondence log, but others may view the correspondence log in a package for reference. The correspondence log can be on the package level or on the RU level. Additionally, the CPOC and SPOC have the ability to create threads within the log. Each time an entry is made, an email notification is sent to the applicable user. CMS can submit clarification requests to the state prior to recommending approval or disapproval of a submission. The clarification gives the state an opportunity to make additional edits. It's similar to an unlock in MMDO or informal RAI, and it does not stop the 90-day clock. Clarifications can be requested on the package level or the RU level. Another option would be for CMS to submit a request for additional information, also known as an RAI. This option does stop the 90-day clock, but it provides the state with an opportunity to address more in-depth questions or updates. When a package is submitted back from RAI, a second clock begins. A state-specific approval notice is generated by the CMS point of contact. The approval notice does not replace official approval documentation, but rather it's a form that notifies the user that their submission package has been approved. It's part of the official record of the package and can be viewed by the state following approval. While navigating in MacPro, we will refer to the upper toolbar and package navigation menu frequently. The upper toolbar is MacPro's main navigation menu. On this menu is the News tab, which contains general status updates on the packages and can be viewed for, excuse me, they can be used for informal communication about packages between different MacPro users. We do want to note here that this tab can be seen by all and comments are not private. The Actions tab is for initiating new actions, such as creating a submission package. The task tab is where specific actions as part of the workflow will populate. The records tab is where you can go to reference submission packages that are complete or in progress. And finally, the reports tab can be used for tracking different activities within MacPro. In the package navigation menu, there are several options that can vary based on MacPro role and package status. We will talk about several of the options throughout today's session, but we wanted to give you a highlight where to find the package navigation menu. A few important tabs in this menu are the summary screen and related actions. The summary screen is where you can locate any information associated with the package, and the, excuse me, and the related actions tab provides opportunities to take additional steps that may not be part of the workflow such as producing a print to PDF of the package. So let's circle back and talk about submission packages. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, a submission package is the electronic package created by the state to propose amendments to a Medicaid state plan. It's a collection of files and the associated file reference information provided by the state to support the request for approval. It includes the necessary attachments and supporting information that are required for approval. A submission package contains an electronic version of the CMS 179, which captures specific information related to a submission package. The submission form also includes public notice and tribal consultation documents. 
So this is an overview of the steps the state will take to create and submit the package. We will go into detail for each step. So first, the state editor creates the package and completes all reviewable units. The state editor then sends the package to the state point of contact to review and edit, and can modify the package as needed. Then, they'll send the package to the state director to review and certify. The state director will review the package for any last edits. If the package is ready to be submitted to CMS, they will certify and this send the package back to the state point of contact. The final step is for the state point of contact to submit the package to CMS. If the state point of contact needed to modify the package further, they must repeat the steps to certify the package again. As a note, these roles are designed to collaborate with each other in MacPro. They can be held by the same person or multiple people to facilitate what works best for each state office. So before states can create a SPA, the State System Administrator, or SSA, must create a state profile. One could already exist for the state as part of another authority, which would mean the SSA would only need to modify the existing profile as needed. The SSA cannot create a second profile because there can only be one per state. So for example, if a state already created a state profile for eligibility, that means that you cannot create a new profile, you may only modify it. To create a state profile, the SSA will navigate to the Actions tab and select Create State Profile. From here, they will need to fill out some basic information for the state like address, Medicaid key contact, and other important information related to their agency. Then they will save the information. Once this profile is saved, a state can create a submission package. Remember, this must be completed before creating a submission package. Most states already have a profile, but the information can be edited at any time by the SSA. The MacPro Help Desk team welcomes your suggestions for our training and reference materials. Please contact us with your feedback and comments on this training or if you need other MacPro assistance. You may contact us via email at macpro underscore helpdesk at cms.hhs.gov or by phone at 301-547-4688.